One, two, this thing on. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Thursday Night Basketball Bayhawks Edition, live here from the Taunton Center, the Taunton campus of uh, Bristol Community College. We are underway. We are in motion. And the Bayhawks already find themselves down 16 to 2 here in the first quarter, if you're just joining us. Thank you all for joining us here on our YouTube channel. As FR FRC Media presents this Bayhawks doubleheader. Rebound and the put in, 18 to two. Nice entry pass there, but stolen away. Flavia Sylvia loses it. Sylvia kicks it back out, three point shot. It's good. Pretty looking shot there. And that was number four, Andrea Gabriel. And the Knights have a 21-2 lead. We'll take a little break here, and we'll come back here on FRC Media, your Bayhawks Broadcasting Network. Short timeout here. First quarter. The Knights are in their dark green. Bayhawks in the traditional white with the green trim and three pointer missed. By number 24, who is Tiana Yancey. Tiana Yancey. Last time we had a Bristol game, she put on a show from the outside. She's the leading scorer for the Bayhawks. Bringing the ball up now is Michaela Nadeau to Yancey. Yancey pulls it for three. Way off the mark, wide left. Knights with the basketball. Here comes Flavia Sylvia, number three, the point guard for the Knights. Bayhawks in a 2-3 zone. Good defense there by, by Bristol. As that was knocked away by number three. Short jumper is good. That was number 13, Deanna Cook. Rhode Island in a 1 2 2 zone. Bristol needs to get something going to the basket. We'll see if Yancey. See, so she shoots again. The runner is no good. Oh, nice rebound there by number two. Shot clock goes off, but they beat the shot clock. The jumper from the elbow was good by number three, Elizabeth Bruno. Hailing from Providence, Rhode Island. 25 to two here in the first quarter. It's a three-point shot. Ooh, from deep. Tori Aruda. In her first year, five-foot guard. And that was actually a long two. Her foot was on the line. The floater in the lane is good. 
by number one, Alicia DeHagen. 27 to four, we only have one team foul. Only one foul committed here in the early going in the first quarter. Jumper is going to come up short. Rebounded by Michelle Marino. Bayhawks in zone. Jumper from the corner is no good. Yancey pulls up just below the three-point line. And she's been off the mark. Long pass. A nice pass and the lay-in and the foul. They do count it. And Elizabeth Bruno will go to the line to try to complete the uh, three-point play the old-fashioned way. Fouls on Flavia Sylvia. And she makes it. Three-point play. 30-4. to four. Yes, that is the correct score. Under a minute to play here in the first quarter. Bayhawks with possession, and that three-pointer is way off the mark. Pushing it in the lane, and it's good. The little floater. Nice strong move to the basket. That was Michelle Marino. 32 to 4. We're just getting warmed up. Again, if you're just joining us, thank you for joining us for this Bayhawks doubleheader. Cold outside. Gonna be a cold weekend, but we're warming up inside here for Bayhawks basketball. As the men will be in action against the Knights. That's way off the mark, and that's gonna put an end to a merciful end to this first quarter, 32 to 4. At the end of the first quarter, we'll be back with more Bayhawks basketball after this, 32 to 4 at the end of the first quarter. All right, welcome back, everybody, as we get the second quarter underway. Here from the Taunton Center on the drive. Nice drive there and getting the contact and then falling to the floor is Aliyah Gonzalez. She's in her first year, five foot nine. Five foot nine forward from Brockton, Massachusetts. Went to Southeastern Regional Technical High School. And she will go to the line for two. First free throw off the glass and in. Second free throw, no good. Rebounded by the Knights. Bruno, they'll swing it around into the corner. Good ball movement here by the Knights. The drive and the kick. The shot in the corner, lefty, it's good. That's her shot, that's her shot right there, Deanna Cook. With the May two on the last possession. Bayhawks going to move around. That three-pointer is going to be way short. Bayhawks come up with it. Now Gonzalez pulls up. The jumper is off the side of the rim. Rebounded by Cook. 34 to 5 the score. Bruno at the point. Again, good ball move by the Knights as they get a good shot. Loose ball, and it is going to be off the Knights. It's going to be off Michelle Marino. She touched it, she touched it last. Let's see if the Bayhawks can be more aggressive and get something going to the basket. As the Knights extend that 2-3 zone. Cross-court pass. Ooh. Miracle how that got there to Yancey. Yancey puts it up. No foul call. I thought there might have been contact there with Mag Magni Schwab. But that ball goes out of bounds. It'll be Knights basketball.
Nice motion offense here by the Knights. Cross court pass. The put up by Bruno, no good. Offensive rebound by the Knights. Deep three. No good, but rebounded by Aaliyah Gonzalez. Cross court pass to Yancey. Three pointer off the side of the rim, and she's been cold from the outside. Bayhawks are going to need to get her going if they're going to have a chance to stay in this game. Long way to go. Cook in the corner. That's her shot. And she makes it again. Again, that's number 13, Deanna Cook. She hails from Coventry, Rhode Island. Shots missed by Gonzalez. Knights aren't exactly pushing the ball up court. They get into their half-court set, and they go to work. There's Cook again. She's, she's been able to do whatever she wants. She'll miss the layup. Cook misses the easy bunny. Gonzalez with the basketball. Tiani Yancey, number 24. Ten on the shot clock. Yancey from deep. She's not afraid to shoot. That ball goes off the side of the rim. Unfortunately for the Bayhawks, that's been the that's been their only offense. Is Tiana Yancey putting up threes? Got to need a little bit more than that, especially against this Knights team. Come on, we need some energy in this building. Cook again in the corner. Nice give and go here. And they're going to call travel, though. They call travel on Elisa DeHagen. Bayhawks need more of a sense of urgency. Setting the pick is Yancey. Going to the hole is Gonzalez. That's something more like it. Gonzalez missed the layup, but that was a That was a nice play there. Gonzalez using the pick. Got to use glass, though, on that layup. Michelle Marino one bound to number four. Andrea Gabriel. They dump it in. The jumper, the short jumper from 10, from 10 feet by number 10, Maggie Schwab. Rhode Island back in zone. They are up 38 to 5. Knocked away by Cook out of bounds. Will be off the Knights. 5.31 to go in the half. Gonzalez on the drive, kicks it back up to Yancey. Other players for the Bayhawks, they gotta get, they gotta come and touch the ball. Come to the basketball. It's only Yancey and Gonzalez shooting. Three-pointer. Short rims it. Bayhawks with the rebound. Tiana Yancey driving into traffic. Knocked away. Going back the other way. Ooh, losing the basketball is number four. Andrea Gabriel. Gonzalez pulls up for three. No good. Rebounded by Schwab. Moreno with the basketball. Nice baseball pass to Cook. No foul call. Nice defensive play by Tiana Yancey. Yancey to the basket. These refs swallowing the whistle. I mean, there is a little bit of contact there now. Only, again, only one team foul. In this quarter. And we have a timeout on the floor, 38 to 5, four and a half to minutes to play here in the first half, and we'll be right back on FRC Media, your Bayhawks Broadcasting Network. All right. All right, we're back. 
Bayhawks to inbound underneath their own basket. It's Yancey. They get the ball in. Short jumpers, no good. Bruno with it. The pass to Cook. And that's the connection right there. Cook with a couple more points. A couple more points to her resume. 40 to 5. Three pointer. That's a, well, we call that a rainbow jumper. Schwab with the rebound. Pushes up to Bruno. Gets it up to Bruno. Seventeen on the shot clock. Three pointer from deep, and it's good. Nailing it is number four, Andrea Gabriel from deep, and it's forty-three to five. Kind of feel for you feel for this BayHawks team. Only, only one person in reserve. Only one person on the bench. BayHawks only go six deep as a team. So naturally, you're only gonna get you're only gonna be fatigued. The runner and getting fouled is Tiani Ansi. Foul's gonna be on Bruno. Substitution. Swab will go out. Number 15 will come in for the Knights. Taylor Taylor Stand. Taylor Stand with the E on the end of it. Tiana Nancy with a nice stroke from the free throw line. Again, Tiana Nancy went to my alma mater, Wareham High School, from Wareham, my hometown. Three pointer by Bruno, no good. Rebounded by Yancey. Here comes Tiana Nancy, Wareham's finest. This jumper from the top of the key, and maybe she'll get hot. Forty-three to eight. Yancey knocks it down. Under three minutes to play. We're just getting started here on this Bayhawks doubleheader. They swing around the perimeter. Good job by the Bayhawks to stay on the ball. Three-pointer again. It's good. Trey Day. Gabriel with another three. Andrea Gabriel showing she got that stroke. From the outside, 44 to 10. Gonzalez puts it up. No good. Getting her own rebound. Throws it into harm's way, though, and it's a turnover. Another Bayhawks turnover. Cook with a nice pass to Gabriel. And boy, Bruno. I'm sorry, Bruno with the pass to Gabriel. Bruno is the floor general for this Knights team. Gonzalez for three, can't knock it down. Rebounded by number one, Alisa DeHagen. The three-pointer to Hagen, no good. Rebounded by Cook. Bayhawks are just, un they're just, just can't match up with this Knights team. Especially on the interior. Gonzalez goes to her right, kicks it back out. Twelve on the shot clock. They go to Yancey. They know she's going to shoot the three-pointer. No good. Taken away by DeHagen. Gabriel for three again. It's good again. Is that Steph Curry out there? Andrea Gabriel's made three three-pointers in a row. And she gives her Knights team a 49-10 lead. Shot in the corner. Nice dribble drive there by Yancey, and then a shot there by number... Can't even see that far. Three-pointer by Gabriel again. She's feeling it. Can't get it to fall. Two offensive rebounds there. And going to the line will be Deanna Cook.
three-headed monster for the um, for the Knights have been Deanna Cook, Elizabeth Bruno, and of course Andrea Gabriel from the outside. Bruno has been the leader; she's been the floor general for the Knights, and Gabriel hitting from the outside, and then Deanna Cook, who's at the free throw line, she's controlled the paint. And the Bayhawks struggle to find offense. And I'm sorry, that last basket by the Bayhawks was by Michaela Nadeau. From Swansea. Went to Case High School. Fifty one to twelve. This half about to come to an end. Gonzalez for three. Looks ooh off the mark. Loose ball went off the Knights. So it's gonna remain Bayhawks basketball. Hope everybody's enjoying their Thursday night. Again, I'm, I'm David Cardoza here on the call. Yancey from deep. Can't get it to fall, and the first half will come to an end. 51 to 12, the Community College of Rhode Island, the Knights, with a 51 to 12 advantage over your Bayhawks. Stay tuned for second half action. No, actually, stay tuned for my interview with the Interim Athletic Director Jason Tassinari, also the coach of the Region 21 champion soccer team, the, Bay, uh, the Bayhawks. And uh, stay tuned for that. And we'll be right back after this. Hey, how you doing here? This is David Cadoz. I'm with the Interim Athletic Director, Mr. Uh, Jason Tassinari, who's also the, uh, the coach of the Region 21 champions. Thank you for adding that. Yeah, I have to add, I have to add that. I appreciate that. You put your championship belt on. So Thank today, you. 51 to 12. This is not a, you know, this is not a joke. It's 51 to 12. What do the the women Bayhawks? What do they have to do to in, to improve well, um, as a team? Well, you know, the thing about the women's basketball team is they're in a very different place. Uh, you know, Coach Kyle Urha. His program for women's basketball is very similar to where men's soccer was. You know, they both came into programs that weren't in good shape, that they have to resurrect slowly. Um, and honestly, the most important thing besides the score is the fact that they're here and they're playing. Right. Um, are they competing? Well, I think from an energy standpoint, they are. They're just limited and, you know, as you can see, compared to some of the – I mean, this, this the CCRI and Massasoit are the top two teams in the region. And you can see the difference between the two teams, David. I mean, anybody at home watching can see the difference between the two teams. But the most important thing for the women's basketball, to me as an athletic director, is they got good character people. The coach is working them hard. Coach is invested, and they're going to complete the season. And that's, that's really the most important thing. And I've said that to Kyle. Uh, we've said that to Kyle before the season even started. Well, you clearly must be proud because a lot of these, a lot of these young women, they have never played basketball before, it's organized. True. Some of them are soccer players. Two of them, yeah. Yeah, so for them to be out here and competing and take such a drubbing. Yep. You know, 51 to 12. Yep. You know, they're still out there. And you have a short, you have a very short bench. So you've you got to be proud of them for their effort. Yeah, I mean, they, you, you could see that when you watch them play, you could see who's limited and who knows what they're doing. And that's not an insult. That's just a fact. And, you know, unfortunately, there's only so many pieces that Kyle can use. And he's just got to go out there and put the players on the court. And hopefully they've improved. And they have improved. You know, I've seen most of the games, David, and they have gotten better. Um, it's hard to judge them when they're playing teams like this. Yeah. I know what it's like. I felt this way when I was at the national tournament. Yeah. So I, I, it's, it's a hard situation to be in. But the most important thing is finishing the season, which will also help recruiting, because the worst thing for a program is to not have a season. Talk to me about Tiani Yancey, who's from my hometown and went to my alma mater, Wareham High School. Did you teach her everything she, she wears, knows? Yes, I did. Oh, good. She wears number 24 like Kobe Bryant. And yes. Like, and like the late, great Wasn't Kobe he number Bryant. eight? 
Well, he was, but then he was number. T- but then he was right. number twenty-four at the end. I'm just testing she's you not sports a, yeah, knowledge. Yeah, I know she's not. A, she's not afraid to shoot like Kobe Bryant. Talk to me about Tiana Yancey a well, little bit. Well, you know, the, she is really her. I, I think her and Michaela Nadeau are the two that really should be shooting the most. I've kind of said that to them, and I think it's kind of obvious uh, that they're the, the the two that have the most fluid, sk- you know, skill as far as shooting. Uh, you know, Yancey clearly is our best player, uh, one of the better players in the region. It's it would be nice if we could see her play on a on a stronger team and see some more of her skills. Right. But what Coach Kyle is asking of her now is to be a leader, um, and I give her a lot of credit. She could she could do everything on her own if she wanted to. She she's a good team player. She distributes the ball. She's a great kid. Um, you know, she she comes to these games with a positive attitude, and that's tough when you haven't won a game and you're losing games big. Yes. So let's switch to the men. Um, the men got up to a hot start this year. They they won their first three games all at home, and uh, they've been kind of like a a middling team a little bit. They've been yeah. kind of been going back and forth. Um, what do they need to do to sneak into the uh, Region 21 tournament? Well, I'll or tell you, they t- there? tonight's a big one. Tonight's a big one when they play CCRI. That's going to be a big They're game. They're the defending champs, right? CCRI, yeah. the defending champions. Yeah, and they had a close game when they played down at CCRI. I'll tell you this. Right now, they're not far away from getting they're, – they're in like that seventh, eighth slot, but they're not far away from the fourth. So there's still a ways to go, and the men have six home games in a row. So they're playing a lot of home games this month, as you guys know, and uh, they're a good home team, and I think that, you know, for them to get in the tournament would be a successful season for – Coach Brian and his program. What do they need to do to get into the tournament? How far are they? A game or two out? Or yeah, right now I believe they're. uh, uh, And their record. Yeah, the record-wise, I I believe they're a a couple of wins behind the number four seed, but they're not alone. There's still some other teams as well jockeying with that fourth seed. Um, And I I had a feeling you're going to ask me that question. I just looked at the standings today, and I. uh, I had a feeling I should memorize them better, but my, my gut instinct tells me of the remaining games coming up, which I believe are six, he's probably going to have to win four of them or five to make sure. That's a lot of games. Well, they have a lot of home games. They do. Yep. So they have, you know, they have a chance to make up some ground. They do. All right, let's get to the, let's get to the meat and potatoes here. We got a few questions that have nothing to do with sports. We know you love this. This is, our, it's my favorite this is their thing. favorite segment out there my in, favorite in, in, segment. T- in TV land. I live for it. Who is your favorite rapper? Of all time. Pitbull. He's not a rapper. Oh, yeah. It says it on my phone that he's a rapper because my <laughs> players are not a rapper. No, I was told to play Pitbull. And, when, and Hold on now. Hold on now. They, they say to me today at school, you've got to play more songs for Pitbull, coach, during the games. So then we're talking about how old he was. How old do you think Pitbull is? He's in his 40s. Yes, he barely. He's 41. Okay. So I looked yeah. that up, and it said singer-rapper. So you, are you going to argue with Wikipedia? <laughs> okay. I'm not, How about Will Smith? I don't want to make anybody. I don't upset. know. I really don't know many rappers. Will it's not Smith, my kind of really? music. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think know. I think one. I think I, like Vanilla Ice or something. Ice Ice Baby. Ice is he Ice. still alive? Yes. Okay. He is. Yeah, he is. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. He does short films now. Is that a joke about me? No. <laughs> no, no, no. Sorry. No. Who is your favorite <laughs> overall athlete of all time? Um, I would say if Larry, you were a young, yeah. if you were yeah. a young man, yeah. Who La- would be on your wall? Larry Bird was, still is. I got pictures in my office. David Ortiz. Um, which is funny because you don't think of those two as athletes, right. but I consider them more sports figures. But they play sports. So. Yeah, Brady always. If you play of course. a sport, you're an athlete. True, and from a soccer standpoint, I was always a big fan of Ronaldo. Okay. And Mia Hamm. Okay. Yep. Um, who are your top, your top five basketball players of all time? You mean as far as who I think are the best or my favorite? A mix. Okay, Bill Russell. I mean, you can't. Bill do, Russell. You, can't, you know, you can't. Bill pick, Russell, like, Larry Bird. Yeah, okay. Kareem. Okay. Kobe and Dr. J. Is that five? That's five. Okay. I just counted. I I co- <laughs> did you not? Did you not say Jordan? I didn't say Jordan, but I, I wasn't. I, I, again, I, it was yeah. partly a combination. Jordan's in there. We have to sign off. Jordan's five B. Let's say that. Okay. Yeah, Jordan should be in there. But I'm going by, you know, players that I grew up watching when I was younger. Jordan was kind of starting out when I was in college, and I didn't really watch a lot of basketball then because I was coaching and playing. So. Um, th- those are the five that I really watched the most. Tom Brady just retired. He did. What is your favorite? What is your favorite Tom Brady memory? 2001, that final drive, because that was when we were no team had won anything in Boston for a while. Yeah, right. And leading we that drive, loser, we were a loser. Yeah, Bill. Yeah, and that was a big one. So that that, okay, that 2001. Okay, tell me to wrap it up. Who's your Super Bowl pick? Uh, I'm going with the. Who do I want? 
Yeah, who do you want? I'm picking the Chiefs, but I want the Eagles. Yes, go Eagles. We're all Philly fans. Bayhawks, see all ya. All right, go Bayhawks. All right, good luck. Okay, buddy. The rest of the season. Thank you, Coach David. Taz, and we'll, Thank you to all the staff. I'm sure we'll be seeing games. you again. You will. Hopefully Thank in the you. tournament. All right. That is your little halftime interview with the uh, coach of the women's soccer team, the Region 21 champions who went to the national tournament this past fall. We're very proud of them, and we're getting ready for second half action. Again, I'm David Cardozo. I want to welcome in again our YouTube audience. Thank you again for joining us for more Bayhawks basketball. We know there's plenty of other things you can watch. We have plenty of other media, social media options, all kinds of things to do. So we do appreciate you tuning in to our YouTube Athletics channel. And yes, the, co the score is correct. It is 51 to 12. But again, we appreciate the, um, the women, the Bayhawks. We appreciate their effort. As they only have six players. Okay, we're underway here. Second half. Aliyah Gonzalez with the basketball. Cross court pass, dangerous pass. But it gets there. A lot better ball movement. Good job. Three pointer. It's good. Need to see more of that. Aliyah G for three. 51 to 15, the toss inside. Nice pass there by Bruno. Gets it inside to Schwab. And of course, Schwab with the height advantage. Gets the two. Here comes Tiana Yancey. We were just talking about Tiana and the good athlete she is and the excellent ball player she is, the leader she is. Gonzalez pulls for three again. Short rims it. Rebounded by Schwab. Jumper by Gabriel. She's off the mark. Corralled by number one to Hagen. Loses it. Gets it knocked away. Yancey. Back to Aliyah. Aliyah G. Can't get it to fall. Rebounded by the Knights. The Knights are one of the top teams in Region 21. And they're putting on a They've been putting on a clinic thus far. Three-pointer, or just short of three. It's two by DeHagan. And it is 55 to 15. Ooh, driving through the zone. And going back out is Yancey. Yeah, you got to move that ball. Move that ball around the perimeter. Three-point shot. That's good. <laughs> Good job, nice shot there. By Nadu. Bruno pulls it from three. Almost rattles it home, rebounded by Aliyah G. Gets it knocked away. Nice retained possession. Long pass up to Bruno. Bruno, nice pass inside to Schwab for the deuce. They're just leaving her wide open. Talking about number 10, Schwab. Aliyah G for three. No good. Rebounded by Gabriel. Andrea Gabriel up to Bruno. Gabriel on the drive. The floater's no good. Rebounded by the center, Schwab. It's another two for her. 59-18. to 18. Seven minutes to go in the third. Bayhawks having a lot better showing here in the early going here in the third quarter. Ooh, up and down. And they're going to call number 10 with the up and down. Bayhawks turn it over. Knights back with possession.
The shot from the wing is no good. Aaliyah G, she's gotten more aggressive here in the third quarter as far as looking for her shot. There you go, setting the pick. Bayhawks doing a better job moving without the basketball. Aaliyah G for three. Out, in and out. Rebounded by Gabriel. Gabriel looking to push. Gabriel on the drive, misses a layup. Bruno saves it, gets it back to Gabriel, who can't get it to fall. Rebounded inside by Hagen. Three-pointer by Gabriel from the top, and she's gone cold. Rebounded by Aaliyah G. Aaliyah Gonzalez. Like to see her drive more. She's got some height. Like to see her be more aggressive. Trying to get into the paint. Good defense here by the Knights. Losing it to Jancy. Now she's being corralled by Knights players and eventually loses it out of bounds. Good defense here by CCRI. And CCRI 59-18. I think at this point in the Bayhawk season, obviously they would love to win. That's what it's all about at the end of the day. But a lot of these young ladies are learning the game. Gabriel, nice cut to the basket. Short jumper is no good. She falls to the floor. And I don't think they call a foul. CCRI is going to retain possession. They're going to, they're going to say it went off the Bayhawks. Three-pointer in the corner. Moreno is good. Michelle Moreno, number zero, gets the trifecta. Yancey back to Gonzalez. Gonzalez a floater in the lane. Those two, late, those two ladies right there for Bristol, Aliyah Gonzalez and Tiana Yancey, they're going to have to play a, a two-woman game. As they are showing themselves as the most potent scorers on this Bayhawks team. As I was saying, another one off the glass. I wonder if she calls that. Another free throw off the glass by Aliyah Gonzalez. Gonzalez misses the second free throw. Rebounded by Moreno. Moreno looking to push. Stops at the three-point line. Pulls it again. Can't get it to fall. Gets her own rebound. Nice hustle. Lays it up and in. Nobody from Bristol blocking out. And that's just a lack of effort right there. And, and a good heads-up play there by Moreno to follow her own shot and lay it in. We have a timeout on the floor by the Bayhawks, and we will take a timeout here on FRC Media. 64-19, to the Knights have the lead over the Bayhawks. We'll be right back. Back after the Bayhawks timeout. Knights in zone. Appear to be in a 2-3 zone. Gonzalez, a floater over Schwab. Deanna Cook with the rebound. 64-19, coming up on four minutes to play here in the third quarter. Three-pointer by Moreno. Loose ball, rebounded by Tiana Yancey. Yancey loses control of the basketball, and Moreno will push for the Knights. Got the numbers, a pass to Schwab, and blocking foul beyond Aliyah Gonzalez. Second team foul on the Bayhawks. Three for the visiting Knights. This Knights team appears to be, I mean, they are a top team. 
in Region 21. They appear to be very fundamentally sound. Second free throw was good. Maggie Schwab from Narragansett, Rhode Island. She's the center for this team, and she's been very formidable. Shot by Nadeau. Can't get it to fall. And this Knights team is deep. I mean, they, they could score. Maggie Schwab shows that her game is in the paint. Nadeau, you know, when she, if she squares up to the basket, she can make some of those shots. She's shooting a lot of those shots off balance. Cook, that lefty. Pass to Cook, I mean, pass to Marino at the free throw line, misses the jumper. Here comes Aaliyah G. Cross court pass to Nadeau. Back to Gonzalez. The three point shot. Can't get it to fall. Rebounded by number 15, who was Taylor Stand. Nice exactly don't have the deepest bench either. Stan in the corner for three. It's good. They swing it into the corner to Stan, and she drills home the three. You feel bad for Tiana Yancey because she's she tries to take the ball into the paint, but they are closing up the paint when she goes in there. There's nobody to pass it to. Nobody to kick it back out to. I mean, so she's drawing those double and triple teams. And the inbound pass from underneath the basket goes out of bounds, and it'll be Knights basketball. 69 to 19. 218 to play here in the third. Stay tuned for the second part of our double header as the Bristol men, the Bayhawks men. Oh, nice pass to a cutting Gabriel, the pass from Moreno. Gabriel does a, such, such a good job moving without the basketball. And she finds her open shot, 71-19. to 19. Again, as I was saying about the Knights, they don't roll deep either on the bench, but they have a lot of quality players. Ooh, that rainbow three by Tiana Yancey. 71-22. Going into the paint, Marino kicks it in the corner to Cook with her shot. Marino gets the rebound. <laughs> I think Maggie Schwab should stay in the stay in the paint. Yeah, she's got that three-pointer by Yancey again. Pulls the trigger, no good. Rebounded by Maggie Schwab. Yeah, the nice is that, I mean, they have five women that can score in, all, in different varieties. Jumper in the corner by Cook, no good. Gonzalez needs a push. Look behind you. Knocked away by Stan. The Knights also, like, they, I mean, they played well. They played very well together as a team. Everybody's touching the basketball. Gabriel for three, off the glass. Another three by Andrea Gabriel. There's been a lot of, a lot of standouts for CCRI, but she's been the, the brightest star today. The short ju the jumper, the pull up is blocked, I believe by Maggie Schwab. We have a substitution. Aaliyah G will go out. Coming in is number number two, Nadell. Michaela Nadell. There is Michaela Nadell for, for three. No good. Rebound by, oh, by Yancey. Shot clock. They're not going to be able to beat the shot clock. Shot clock.
Shot clock is off. And that is the end. Well, that's why. That's the end of the third quarter. At the end of three, 74 to 22, the Knights have the lead over the Bayhawks. We'll be right back here on FRC Media for the fourth quarter. Stay tuned. We're back here from the Taunton Center for the fourth and final chapter. Bayhawks were holding their own in that third quarter. I thought they came out a little bit more energy, a little bit more intensity. So that, oh, that, as that pass sails out of bounds. Just as I say, just as I say that. Yeah, Bayhawks. As I was saying earlier, there's, it's not about so much about the wins right now as it is building a new program. Gabriel from the top, off the mark. And the rebound by Moreno. I think about for these young ladies right now, it's about team building, teamwork, and learning, learning the game. And rebuilding a program that was once a um, a good a good solid program where teams teams of the past made it to the Region 21 tournament. Cook in the corner. That was her shot. I mean, that shot's wide open for her every single time, but she's been missing it. Driving to the hole is DeHagen. She misses the little finger roll. Yancey looking to push. Yancey crosses over, trying to get into the paint. I'm telling you. Nadal, she needs to set her, she needs to She's so worried about getting her shot blocked, I think, as, as soon as she gets it, she's just throwing it up there. She needs to, you know, take her time, face up to the basket, and get her shot off that way. Oh, Moreno. What <laughs> a nice, I don't know how she did that. I don't even know how she got that shot up there. It was a weird release. 78 to 22. Winding down here. Sylvia. I'm not sure if that was a shot or a pass. Either way, Moreno. Bruno steps inside the arc. Jumper is no good. The Knights have. They have a couple southpaws. Yancey from deep, no good. Rebounded by DeHagen. DeHagen leading the break, the bounce pass to Bruno. I'm sorry, Moreno. And she lays it in. Another weird looking layup. I don't know where she's like, where she's shooting it from. Ball ends up in the cylinder. 88 to 22. Back in a 2-3 zone now. The runner by Yancey is no good. Bruno. Nice look, nice pass to, ooh. Try to find Gabriel, pass goes out of bounds. Seven oh seven to play. Again, stay tuned. As the men's Bristol Bayhawks team the men's Bristol Bayhawks basketball team. Try saying that three times fast. They'll be in action shortly after the women's game comes to an end, and they will take on the reigning, defending Region 21 champions, the CCR Knights. Yancey, three-point is short. Underneath, and Nadal gets it blocked. It's taken away by Bruno. Up to stand. The floater, no good. And rebounded by Aaliyah G. Yancey loses control of it. And it'll be uh, off the Knights. 
Yanni Yancey looking inbound. Ooh, somehow, oh, nice play there. Good job. Number Deuce Juice. Good composure there to get that shot off in the paint, off the inbound pass. And that was number 22, Emily Belmont. Emily Belmont, who was on the Region 21 women's soccer, Region 21 champion women's soccer team. That's what I'm saying. The Bayhawks have soccer players in their team. I mean, they should try to kick that ball through the hole. After the basketball game, they should pull the nets out, the soccer nets. Three-pointer. It almost looked like she was going for glass off that. It looked like she was trying to bank that one in to no avail. But Andrea Gabriel, she's been a she's been a stud from the outside. Nadeau can't make it. Belmont looking for her second basket. Couldn't get it, couldn't get it to fall. Just impressed with the Knights and their the way they play as a team and the way they come to the basketball, their motion offense, the way they're able to spread the floor, and the way they're able to score in a variety of ways. Look at Deanna Cook. She scores from mid-range. She scores in the paint. And then you look at Maggie Schwab, who I believe is on the bench now. She's a center. She scores in the interior. And then... Elizabeth Bruno, who's the point guard, who's the point guard of this team, ball handler. Um, she creates offense for herself and for others. And then, of course, Andrea Gabriel, who's just hitting from downtown like it's nothing. And then Michelle Moreno, who gets it done in a variety of ways herself. So I mean, they have individual parts that do different things. And that's the make it of a good basketball team. Eight to twenty-four. We have a timeout on the court. On the clock. I mean, on the court. Four fifty-two. The new AD and the former AD, Derek Viveros, longtime athletic director for <laughs> nearly twelve years for Bristol, did a great job with this program, this overall athletics program. As we've seen championships in. Women's soccer, great success in Bristol Bayhawks basketball. And the program just building and building with golf now and cross country and track in the spring. And Derek Riveros has moved on to Bridgewater State University. Belmont for, was that Belmont? No, not Belmont. Three pointer, no good. Yeah, Derek has moved on to Bridgewater State University to be their assistant athletic director. Jumper's no good. That's number 10, Tony Arruda. Again, not a lot of fouls, only one team foul in this fourth quarter. Flashing to the top, and the Cook misses the, the jumper near the free throw line. And now that ball goes out of bounds. It will stay Knights basketball. New shot clock. 80 to 24. Gabriel pulls the trigger for three, and that one rolls around and rolls around and down. Another one from downtown by Andrea Gabriel. Putting on a putting on a show from the outside. 83 to 24. Gonzalez flashes in the corner. Three-pointer no good. She had a good look. Cook, the floater, gets her own rebound, and it's good. 
A 61 point lead for the Knights. Three and a half to go here in the fourth quarter in the game. Yancey pulls from deep and she shows she's got that range. Another three for Tiana Yancey. The pass in the corner to Cook. Short. Yancey. Ooh. I would have liked to have seen a better, like a, a bounce pass there. As Nadell, she can't hold on to the pass. Yancey kind of threw that one at her feet. Nadell not able to not able to handle it. The kick in the corner to Hagen for three. Knocks it down. How about the outside shooting for the Knights? 87 to 27. The drive, they kick it out to the corner, and DeHagan knocks it down. Even the role players for the Knights have, have showed up and showed out tonight. Gonzalez gets it to the paint. They collapse on her. And they're going to call a jump ball. Position arrow in favor of Bristol. Season is winding down. We're in February. Yancey for three, comes up short. Rebound by, was by Deanna Cook. She's been very good on the boards. Hagen, that's going to be a two, but showing that outside, showing that outside stroke again. Gonzalez for three, and she nails it. Aliyah G. Bristol has some building blocks. Aliyah, Aliyah Gonzalez in her first year. Five foot nine. She should be back next year. Turn around. Ooh, I thought that might have been a travel. Cook. I'm sorry, uh, stand. Misses the turnaround. Misses the turnaround, Jay. Aliyah G. Oh, rebounded by Flavia Sylvia. Look what I found. Nadal for three. And that goes out of bounds. Coming up on a minute, it's a minute 10 to play. Referees have really swallowed their whistles in this one. Pulling up and showing the mid-range is Andrea Gabriel, 91 to 30. She's definitely our player of the game. Ninety-one to thirty. Bruno kicks it to the corner. Gabriel's just gonna keep shooting, shoot his shoot. And <laughs> shoot his make. Another make for Gabriel. Andrea Gabriel. Showtime. Yancey for three. And we're winding down here in the final seconds. Every Bayhawks game, we try to give out our Dozy Award. Who exemplifies Bayhawks grit? Today, I'm going to give that award to Aaliyah G, who really, I said time after time, she really needs to be more aggressive and look for her shot more. And she did just that, hitting a few threes in the second half. And hopefully she can build on that. 94 to 30, that's the the final score here from the Taunton Center. 94 to 30, the CCR Knights come in here as one of the top teams in Region 21, and they defeat the women Bayhawks. Okay, stay tuned for the second part of our doubleheader as the men Bayhawks are in action against the reigning defending Region 21 champions, the CCR Knights men. Okay, so for our YouTube audience, stay tuned for that in just a little bit. I'm David Cardozo. We'll be right back. And just a little bit for the second part of our doubleheader here on Thursday Night Basketball. <laughs> 